today on Living Power. We all have different parts. We all are different parts of the body, but we're all necessary to the body. We all belong to the body, and therefore, Romans says, we belong to each other. It's all about Jesus. Live for God Studio Productions. This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. This is today's Living Power scripture reading. I'll be reading today from Psalms 2. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and testify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me. You are my son today, I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Okay, so um, today we're going to continue in our study of spiritual gifts, and we're looking today at the gift of serving. Uh, all of these gifts are in Romans in chapter 12, and Romans chapter 12 mentions, as, and, and I'm just going to give you this real fast recap, there are seven basic gifts that are mentioned in Romans chapter 12. Are there other gifts? Um, I don't think there are, because I think Paul said these are the gifts. He, said, and he, does, he didn't mention that there were other gifts. And I think Paul was very clear in saying these are the basic gifts that God uses for his ministry. Then in Corinthians, he goes on, and again, it's still Paul writing, and Paul says there are various gifts. So basically he said, the, I already told you what the gifts are. Uh, and he says, and there are various ministries. So you have a spiritual gift. The Bible indicates that you have a primary or maybe even a couple of primary spiritual gifts. We'll get into that uh, later on. But uh, uh, you have spiritual gifts and you certainly have a spiritual gift that God wants to use. When you're born physically, you're born with certain physical talents. When you're born spiritually, you're born with certain spiritual talents. And those spiritual talents we call spiritual gifts. And God gives each of us different gifts. But what he wants to do is use those gifts for his glory. So he gives us ministries. And so you may know what your spiritual gift is. But if you don't know what your ministry is, you're dead in the water. So you have to have a spiritual gift, but you also have to have a ministry. In other words, a way to use that spiritual gift. Now, I mentioned last Sunday, my, I think my spiritual gift is, is prophecy. It's nothing to brag about. It's just something that God gives each one of us. And so if my gift is prophecy. I need to know what your gift is. You need to know what my gift is, because that way we can minister to each other that way. But I have a ministry of teaching. Now, there's also a spiritual gift of teaching, and that does show up in, in, in when I'm checking out what my spiritual gifts are. 
um, it, when I do my spiritual survey, it does show up. But I, I still think that teaching is my ministry and not my primary spiritual gift. Prophecy seems to be my spiritual gift. Teaching is just a ministry. But now I know how to use my spiritual gift, see, because this is my ministry. And so you have to have a spiritual gift, but also a way to use that gift, which is your ministry. And then Corinthians goes on and says, uh, not, a, not only are there a variety of gifts, but there are a variety of ministries. There are also a variety of locations. In other words, ways to use that gift and that ministry. Now, uh, Romans 11, I think it's 36. Uh, I believe, anyway, it's Romans 11, maybe 39. Anyway, Romans 11 says that the gifts of God are without repentance. In other words, you have a gift and that's your gift. You're, you're spiritually born with that gift. Your gift doesn't change, but your ministry will often change, and so will the location of your, your ministry. So, so all of us have this unique concoction, if you will, of spiritual gifts, ministries, and locations. And all of us are different. And so for, for me to compare myself to you would be terribly wrong, because none of us are going to be alike in what God wants to do in and through our lives. So last week we looked at, at prophecy. This week we're looking at, servi at serving, which is in uh, Romans 12, verses 6 through 8. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. So there you go. There's the second gift that's mentioned. These are not in order of priority. These are just thrown out there. Paul is, there's no meaning to the list itself as to how it's listed. He's just saying these are the gifts. Serving is one of them. Now let's look at what the definition is of the gift of serving. Serving means to bring relief. To bring relief. It's the motivation to demonstrate love by meeting practical needs. Now this is really important to understand. The word practical is very important to understand here. A person who has the gift of serving wants to meet practical needs. They think of it in, in that sense of the word. Uh, and there is a big difference between the misuse of the gift of prophecy and every gift has its uses and its misuses. We'll take a look at misuses of serving here in a little bit. But one of the misuses of, of the gift of prophecy, for example, is that we don't, as, as a prophet, I tend not to look at needs uh, and, and think, oh, what is this person's need? I just think this is what the word of God says and I want to proclaim the truth of the word of God and let God take care of that not necessarily wrong all the time, but it can be because if, if you are insensitive. A person who has the gift of serving is very sensitive to that. They want to meet somebody's practical need. What can I do for them that will make a difference in their life? So to bring relief, it's the motivation to demonstrate love. And notice that it's to demonstrate love. It's motivated by love. Love is, remember, we've defined love as allowing God to do something in someone else's life through you. Allowing God to do something in someone else's life through you. If I'm going to love my wife, then I have to allow God to do something in her life through me. If she's going to love me, then I have to allow God to do something in my life through her. Same thing with your co-workers, with your family, with your friends. Love is allowing God to do something in someone else's life through you. So the person who has the gift of serving is going to allow God to do something in someone else's life through them. And they are motivated by this love to meet practical needs. Now, the biblical example that we have is Timothy. Timothy is a great example of this. And you'll see this as we go along. And I show you some verses talking about Timothy's, uh, his gift and his character and his nature and all of it, this began to reveal itself. Now, let's define these characteristics. And there are 10 characteristics that we're going to look at this morning. The first characteristic is this. Person who has the gift of serving has an ability to see practical needs and a desire to meet them. Well, that fits the definition that we've talked about. But in a very practical way, I want you to see two things about this, this, this ex explanation of this characteristic. First of all, an ability to see practical needs. In other words, there, this is a filter for a person who has the gift of serving. They're looking for needs that people may have. Now, a very, and, and I have I've told you that I'm, as I know people who have this gift, I'm going to use them as examples. And I always get in trouble for this, so pray for me. But Marsha has the gift of serving. So I'm going to talk about her today. Because I can. And I, and I will pay the price for you. Uh, 
uh, Marsha has the gift of serving. And it's delightful to watch that and to listen to her talk about people and their needs because that's the way she thinks. She looks at people and defines their needs. She looks at and she sees needs. Sometimes that uh, I, I look at their and I think, how did she see that in them? How did she understand that that was a need? I, I looked at it and I thought, eh, that's just the way they are. And she sees a need. You know, that's part of the gift of serving. Not only to be able to see practical needs, but a desire to meet them. There's a need, I want to meet them. Now, this can also turn into a misuse, as we'll look at here in a few minutes. But a person who has the gift of serving has a desire to meet those needs that they see. Now, it happened in, uh, with Timothy uh, in, in Philippians. Paul uh, goes on and talks about him. He says uh, in Philippians 2, starting with verse 19, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon so that I too may be cheered by news of you. For I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. That's a person who has the gift of serving. It's genuine. They're genuinely concerned about somebody's welfare. And, and not only that, but he says, for they all seek their own interests. The people that, that, uh, of, of the different ministries, uh, of the different churches that Timothy would go to. But they all seek their own interests, but, and not those of Jesus Christ. But you know Timothy's proven worth. Timothy had proven this character. He had proven this gift. It was very obvious that he had this gift of serving. And he saw practical needs and a desire to meet them. The second characteristic is a joy in serving when it frees others to do more important things that they consider to be more important things. Not that they are more important, but they think of them that way. It frees other people to go do important things or other important things, not just to keep busy. In other words, I want to meet people's practical needs, but it's not just so that I'll have something to do. It's not about just being busy. It's about really focusing on the need, somebody who actually has a need, and I can do something about this, and then other people will have the time to go do the things that God wants to do in and through their lives. Now, I want you to understand something. A person who has the gift of serving often has an ability to understand what the real need is and how to minister to it, but they also understand that serving is a principle of what we call body life. Now, in Romans chapter, 12, uh, chapter 11 and chapter 12, particularly in chapter 12, it says this. It talks about we're all part of the same body, the body of Christ. But we're not all the same part in the body. Some of you are elbows. Some of you are earlobes. Some of you are heels. <laughs> and, and so we all have different parts. We all are different parts of the body, but we're all necessary to the body. We all belong to the body. And therefore, Romans says, we belong to each other. So we are part of each other's lives. And together we connect to create this body of Christ. And it functions as we function well together. And, and so a person who has the gift of serving understands this. That if I do my part, that frees people with other gifts to do their part. So that the body can function the way it's supposed to function. Uh, Acts 18.5 says, when Silas and Timothy came to, uh, from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching. Paul had been busy doing some other things, but when Timothy arrived, he was free to go preach and to testify to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. In other words, Timothy arrived on the scene and was able to do the things that needed to be done in the serving sense so that Paul was free to go do the things that he was able to do, which was to teach and to, and to preach in, in, in those different towns that he was in. And so here, here Paul knew that that was Timothy's gift and he just freed him up to do it. He just freed him up to do that. Now, it's very important to understand that when you have to give a servant some freedom, and we'll look at this in just a moment, servants need the freedom to do what they need to do. And if they have somebody over them saying, oh, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do this, you got to do that, that is really, really quenching them. And they have a problem with that. And it's struggle. You know, they don't want to be told all the time what to do. They want to know what to do, but they don't want to be told all the time, oh, you got to do this, you can't do that, you have to stop doing that. And, some, and that usually is, a, is either a gift, a misuse of a particular gift, probably the gift of administration, or it's just sin. It's just bossing people around. So uh, a, a person who has the gift of servant 
understands that we all need to work together within the body to accomplish what it is that God wants to accomplish. The third characteristic is a tendency to disregard per personal health and comfort in serving others. By the way, this is also a misuse where they disregard personal health and comfort. But a person with the gift of serving is so focused on meeting needs that they oftentimes will disregard what their needs are and the fact that they need to get some rest. I know somebody like that. I know somebody like that. Just get so busy doing things that, that need to be done and taking care of them, some things that she just gets exhausted. She's just tired and just worn out. And then she hurts and then even feels sick. That happens with servants. Servants get so busy that they begin disregarding their personal health and comfort. Well, what Paul said to Timothy was in 1 Timothy 5.23, stop drinking only water and use a little wine because of your stomach and your frequent illnesses. Now listen, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that Paul said, Tim, lighten up, grab a beer, relax. <laughs> That's not what he was saying, just so you know. What he was saying was, Timothy, you need to take care of yourself. Timothy, you need to take care of yourself. You need to focus on the fact that you have needs also. A person with the gift of serving will also consider other people, will often consider other people's needs greater than their own needs. And they may be greater. But what happens is, is that they consider their needs greater than their own needs to a fault. And so they're more concerned about other people's needs than they are about their own needs. And Paul was telling Timothy, look, you're a better servant when you take care of yourself. You're a better servant when you take care of yourself. The fourth characteristic is this, a difficulty in saying no, resulting in a variety of involvements and a tendency to get sidetracked. A difficulty in saying no. And that results in a variety of involvements and tendencies to get sidetracked. This is a big problem, but it's a characteristic of a servant. By the way, I love to say no. You know, it's just become, it's become, to me, it's become the most freeing word in the English dictionary. Can you do this? No. And it's amazing how quick I can make that decision, you know? No. Person with the gift of serving goes, uh, and they're thinking, how can I do this with all the other things? You know, can I work this in? Okay, can, you know. A person with the gift of serving it has difficulty saying no. And yet Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.14, do not neglect your gift, which was given you through a prophetic message when the body of elders laid their hands on you. What he was saying is, don't get so busy that you can't do your gift. Now his gift was the gift of serving, but what Paul was saying is, don't get so tied up and, and focused on everything that you can't do what you're supposed to do. In other words, don't spread yourself so thin that you can't do the serving that God has called you to do. Listen, we are all motivated by needs. We are, motivate, we are creatures that are motivated by needs. We are not motivated by wants. We, you, are not, you want things, but that doesn't necessarily motivate you. You know, it's, but your needs do motivate you. And other people's needs do motivate you. I remember when, when I was in radio, we would do, some of you may remember this, the adopt a family. And we would do around Christmas time, we would adopt out families in the Kansas City area. And every year we adopted anywhere from 2,300 to 2,800 families. And they were all adopted by listeners and all, everybody in that family got gifts. And it, it was amazing how well they took care of these families. Whole businesses would take care of one family, sometimes up to 10 families. It was amazing how that worked, but it wasn't because of their people's wants and all the children would have a wish list. We'd have them fill out a wish list so we know what to buy for them. Well, you know, a 12 year old boy is going to have quite a wish list. You know, and it's amazing how expensive that wish list is. And we'd get this call from the, from the company and say, oh, uh, 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 we can't afford this. No, that's not the point. It's not about their wants. It's about their needs. On the other hand, somebody would write and, and they'd list what, what, their, what they really wanted for Christmas. And it would be like socks and soap. That would, it, that would be it. Like some socks and some soap. I mean, literally, people would write that as, as what they wanted for Christmas. 
So it, it, it's, it, but that was a need, and we knew that that was a need, and boy, those needs got met quickly. But it was amazing that people's wants didn't so much motivate people to give. People are motivated by needs, not by wants. And so you are one of those people. All of us are one of those people. When we see things that people want, it doesn't necessarily motivate us. But if we see that it's something that they need, yes, we are motivated. Well, a person with the gift of serving is so much more motivated by needs. They see needs, and so they, they, they are driven by needs. They are driven by needs that they see, sometimes to a fault. But the, it is the needs that drives them. When they see something as a need, they drive them. Now, here's the, here's the, the second layer to all of that. Is it really a need? Sometimes a servant will confuse a need with a want. And they say, well, this person needs this. Well, no, that person has just indicated it is a, it's, it's a want. But it's not really a need. But a servant is going to be motivated by what they perceive to be a need. So you have to be very careful if you are, have the gift of serving to that you, you, um, you are actually going to meet a need. Now listen, this is important to remember. If you have the gift of serving, that is how God intends to use you. He intends to use you to meet people's needs somehow. Now it doesn't mean that you meet, listen, it doesn't mean that you meet their needs. It means that you are involved in meeting their needs. It may be one of those things like somebody has a need for, name it, whatever it is. And uh, here's, here's a good example. Uh, somebody who needs a car. They can't get to work. Uh, they can't get their kids to school. Their car is it's shot. They don't know what to do. person with, who has the gift of serving and is using it correctly and God impresses on them that they need a car. Well, they, they can't necessarily go out and buy a car for them, but they may know somebody who can or they may know somebody who can find a car for them, or they know a, a way to help them get a car, even if it's just on a temporary basis. The idea is that if that's your gift, that's how God intends to use you. It may not be, be the person that gives them that gift or that uh, meets that need, but you help them get that need met. You find a way or you help to find a way. Uh, and the problem is that there are lots of needs out in the world. I don't know if you, you noticed that. But there are lots of needs out in the world and to get busy in a lot of other things that don't fall under the category of an actual legitimate need um, and you get focused on that means that you're neglecting your gift. You see what I'm saying? If you get so busy, oh, that's a need, that's a need, that's a need, I gotta do this, this person has this need and you get so busy focusing on all these needs, what you end up doing is actually neglecting your gift the way that God wants to use it. Because more than likely, God, God's not wanting you to meet five, six, seven needs at a time. You know, it may be one need at a time, maybe two needs at a time. But God's not going to spread you so thin. You know, God knows what, what you can, what you're able to handle and what he can accomplish through you. So it's not one of those things where God says, okay, pick a need. I got seven needs for you. Pick one and go, it doesn't do it that way. God says, I want to focus in on this need because I'm going to do something in your life and through your life to meet this particular need. And if you get so busy on other things that don't fall under that category or that calling, then you are actually neglecting your gift of serving. The fifth characteristic is a gentle spirit of faithfulness. A gentle spirit of faithfulness. Uh, I'm gonna tell you that there's no other characteristic that defines Marsh any better. This is the, that's just Marsha's nature. She has a gentle, spirit of faithfulness now faithfulness remember faith is trusting obedience to the known will of god and so a person who has this gentle spirit of trusting obedience to the known will of god is just very matter of fact i'm going to obey god as god reveals this to me i'm going to do it it's a very simple powerful faith and it's 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 amazing to watch god work in a person who has the gift of serving in the way that they God uses them to connect and touch people's lives. 2 Timothy 1.5, uh, Paul talks about it. He says, I've been reminded of your sincere faith. You're trusting obedience to the known will of God. I've been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. 
You have this faithfulness, Timothy, and this faithfulness is, is what motivates you and drives you. You are, you, are, you are seeing the needs that God puts before you, and you are faithful to, to pursue uh, that, that need and to let God do something in that need. The sixth characteristic is a special enjoyment in providing for physical needs and comforts. In other words, it's, it's you, physical needs and, and, and those physical comforts uh, you, you take great joy. Oh, they need some blankets. You know, they need some clothes. These kids need some clothes. There's a special joy in being able, in a simple way, to meet those needs. It's the the little things, the physical needs and comforts that just there's a special enjoyment in that, because it's to a person who has the gift of needs or the spirit, uh, the, the the gift of, of serving, there is a, a desire to meet those physical needs because. They're the easy ones to meet, you know, to be able to buy somebody a pair of shoes, you know, to, to, to help somebody in, in, in that way. Now, it's also, uh, along with that, there's an ability to remember likes and dislikes. I don't know how they do it because, uh, you know, I don't care. But uh, that's a misuse of the gift of prophecy, I know. But a person who has the gift of surfing seems to be able to have this ability to remember what people like and what they dislike. And they remember, uh, you know, these are the things that they love and that they don't love. And these are the things that make a difference in their life. And, and uh, a person with the gift of serving has that ability. And Timothy, uh, Paul refers to it in 2 Timothy 4.13. When you come, he's talking to Timothy, uh, when, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. Now, Timothy would have known what these things were that were so important to Paul. So Paul didn't have to go into this explanation because Timothy would know exactly what it was that Paul was talking about, what he needed, those things, those physical things that he needed that were so important to him. The seventh characteristic is a need for appreciation to confirm that service is necessary and satisfactory. This can be a misuse, but it's also a positive characteristic, a need for appreciation. Now, this is not pride. Don't interpret this as pride. Rather, this is uh, just a desire to know that your servanthood is meeting needs. And so it's not like, I need to be appreciated. It's not that at all. It's, so it's, it's the realization that what you're doing actually is making a difference in people's lives. That they're needing something. That, they, that, that you've met uh, or that God has met a need through you. A person with the gift of sermon, serving wants to know that God is working in and through their lives. We all need that. We all want that. But the person with the gift of serving wants to know that if they are meeting people's needs, God is, they feel like God has called them to this and, and they're, they're doing that, then, then there, there is a sense of appreciation. Now, here, get this, it may not be a sense of appreciation from the person that they've ministered to. It may be a sense of appreciation from somebody else that noticed it. it may be a sense of appreciation from God himself who says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So it's just a sense that I'm doing the right thing. This is making a difference in somebody's life. Second Timothy 2.15, Paul said this to Timothy, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly handles the word of truth. Now, I will tell you that a preacher and a teacher struggles with this, with this verse. This is, a, I, I can't tell you how I, I mean, tremble is not a, a misuse of the word. When I teach, I'm always afraid that I misrepresent what the Word says. I want to be so faithful to the Word of God. And it's important. To, and some of you have said, well, you, you spend a lot of time studying. That's because I don't want to screw it up. I, I want to say it right. I, I want it to be truth. You know, it's, it's important for me to, to speak truth and, and to identify what truth is. And so the person who has this gift of serving wants to make sure that when they, when they minister, when, they are, when they're ministering to people's lives, they are doing it properly. They're doing it the right way. There is that need to know that they did it, that they did it the right way, and that there's some appreciation or at least some recognition for it, whether it be by God or whether it be by somebody else or maybe even the person that they minister to. The eighth characteristic is a desire for clear instructions, clear instructions, Without time limits, servants hate time limits. You know, and, and in fact, some people who have the gift of some people who have the gift of serving don't even wear a watch. Yeah. 
but they love calendars. Just saying. Uh, people who have the gift of serving don't like time limits. They don't like time limits, but they want to make sure that they have this idea in their head and they understand it. And they particularly want short-term projects. They, long-term projects don't, don't really excite them. They don't think that way. They, they think in short-term projects. Marcia and I are talking about doing some remodeling at the house. I look at it as everything that we want to do. You know, I, to me, it's, it's a whole, just a whole parcel and pack of things that need to be done. Just a whole bunch of stuff that needs to be done. Marcia looks at it, each individual project, you know, each one, each one is, and, and we start looking at it in order of priority. And I'm looking at this huge picture that needs to be done. And, you know, and I've been very generous. I've told her, we've got a budget of $1,000. You know, if you want to, <laughs> you want to redo the kitchen, go right ahead. But remember, we got other things to do too, you know. But she thinks of it in short-term projects because that's kind of the way that, that a person with the gift of serving thinks. They think of short-term projects. They prefer things, short-term projects. But when it comes to meeting needs, they want to know, they want to have clear instructions and they want to be able to do it without time limits. Often, it's often difficult, by the way, for a person with the gift of serving, often difficult for a person with the gift of serving to get started on something because they don't understand it or what they're supposed to do. Now, they know that there's a need here. They know that something has to be done. But because the, one of the characteristics of this gift is they have trouble getting started because they don't have a clear understanding of what they should do and, and, and what needs to be done. And so they're going to wait until they've got it figured out to get it done. A bullheaded prophet will just say, well, let's just start. We'll get something done, you know. And if it's wrong, we'll fix it. You know, that's kind of the way a prophet thinks. But a person with the gift of serving, it wants to, to make sure that they've got everything. They want to know that all the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, that sort of thing, before they get started, or at least as much as possible. The ninth characteristic is a strong desire to be with others, thus providing more serving opportunities. Listen, people who have the gift of serving love fellowship. Now, that doesn't mean that they like crowds. That doesn't mean that they like big, you know, to get together with a bunch of people. But they do love fellowship. They enjoy being with, with some people together. They, they, they love fellowship. They love to be together with some people. They're very fellowship oriented. The tenth characteristic is a tendency to feel inadequate and unqualified for spiritual leadership. A person who has the gift of serving often, does, often doesn't think of themselves as a leader. They often just, that doesn't enter their mind that I'm a leader. They don't think of it that way. Uh, uh, Paul said to the Corinthians, to the church in Corinth, he said, if Timothy comes, see to it that he has nothing to fear. Make sure that, 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 that this isn't a problem for him. He has nothing to fear while he's with you, for he's carrying on the work of the Lord just as I am. No one then should refuse to accept him. What he's saying was, I want you to understand that Timothy needs to feel adequate and he needs to feel accepted and he needs to understand that he is qualified. Timothy is coming to you because he is qualified. A person who has the gift of serving is going to serve because they, God is qualified to do something through them. So it's not up to their qualification, it's up to God's qualification. Listen, if God calls you to do something that you can't do, it's probably what you're supposed to do. Not only is it probably what you're supposed to do, it is what you are supposed to do because God has called you. But here's the key. God doesn't call you to the possible, he calls you to the impossible. God doesn't call you to do the possible. Oh, I can do that. Thanks, God, I'll got it from here. He calls you to do the impossible that he has to do through you. And so if you think, oh, I can do this, I can do that. Oh, I, all they need is a pair of shoes, I can do that. There's probably more to it than that. And so the gift of, uh, the gift of serving is the sense that I have to realize that God is up to something in and through my life that's bigger than I understand. Now, a person who has the gift of serving will sometimes struggle with this role of leadership because they prefer to be in the background. And it's not that they prefer to hide, it's not that at all. They just don't wanna be in the limelight. They just want to serve and they wanna meet people's needs. But sometimes when, that, when they're meeting those needs and the limelight gets on them because they're doing that, they tend to really back off and they don't finish the job. 
But that's just part of that. Sometimes that's a misuse, obviously. But the idea is that a person who has the gift of serving wants to meet people's needs, but sometimes they don't know when the need has been met. And sometimes they think the need has been met when it hasn't. And that's something that God has to do. That's something that the Holy Spirit has to do and reveal in and through their lives. Now, we've got just a few minutes left, and I want to run through these misuses very quickly. There are nine of them. And the first misuse is that, and I've mentioned this before, one of the ways that you know what your gift is, you figure out what your misuses are. Oh, that's what I do that. Oh, yeah, that's what I do. And we all have a little bit of this in it. Don't you realize that? Because it's the gift of the Holy Spirit, and you have Holy Spirit living inside of you. And so some of these gifts are all active, all of these gifts are active to, in your life at some point, at some, at some level, just that some are more dominant than others. But anyway, for the gift of serving, here's some of the misuses. Number one, neglecting home responsibilities to help others. Neglecting home responsibilities to help others. Now, I must say, this is not Marcia. Marcia's learned to master this. But it's, it's important for, for, for those who have the gift of serving to figure this out. Your gift is to be used within your circle of influence. Your gift is to be used within your circle of influence, and that usually begins at home. 1 Timothy 5.8, uh, Paul said this to Timothy. He's talking about other people. He wasn't talking about Timothy, but he said, If anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever person who has the gift of serving sometimes misuses their gift because they get so focused on helping others and disregarding the people at home. The second misuse is accepting too many jobs at one time. We've kind of talked about that already. But it usually happens when you're motivated by your emotions instead of by the Holy Spirit. You just, oh, this person needs this. Oh, this person needs that. Oh, this person has got to have that. And you get so focused on people's problems and, and people's issues and sometimes people's wants that you accept too many of those things all at one time instead of focusing, focusing in on what it is that Holy Spirit wants you to do and where Holy Spirit is leading you. The third misuse is that you, they wear themselves out physically. Now, there's a huge difference between being tired and being overworked and overcommitted. Huge difference. Being tired is, is, is just part of it. We're all tired. Are any of you not tired? Would you raise your hand? See, you're all too tired to raise your hand. It's, we're tired. We're, I mean, there's a lot going on. I was just praying about my, my kids uh, today, that uh, uh, Jordan and, and Jennifer has three children. And I was thinking, Lord, I just can't imagine raising three children in this world today. I just can't do it, you know, especially when their ages are, are five, six, or five, six, and, and 10. I'm close, aren't I, Marshall? No, not even close. I thought it was close. Anyway, they have children around in those ages, and raising those kids in this environment, it's got to be really, really tough. And I and I and I hurt for them, and I you know, and I pray for them, and I I, I want them to 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 be stronger, and I pray that they'll have this strength and this endurance and this persistence, because it's real easy to wear yourself out in these in these times, but it's just part of being tired. But there's a difference between being tired and being overworked and overcommitted. And a person who has the misuse of the gift of serving sometimes can't tell the difference between the two. The fourth misuse is being too persistent in giving unrequested help to others. You know, just because you see the need doesn't mean that that other person sees it as a need. Just because you say, oh, that person has this need, they may not know that that's a need in their life may not even think that way, may not even be considering it. So you have to be very careful that you're, if you're trying to get, meet a need that that person doesn't even think is a need, then you're going to run into some problems there. A fifth characteristic misuse of, of serving is going around proper authorities in order to get jobs done. Now, I'm glad that that's a misuse of the gift of serving because as a prophet, I love doing this. So it can't possibly be a misuse for a prophet, right? I mean, surely not. But this is true for a servant, going around authorities in order to get jobs done. Sometimes, oh, this is a need, I'm going to do it. You know, we'll deal with these other issues. It's easier to get forgiveness than it is to get permission. You know, that type of attitude. The sixth uh, misuse is excluding others from helping on a job. Now, this is usually unintentional. 
But sometimes they're so focused on the, and this is a big one. It's, it's kind of the, uh, oh, I'll just do it myself mentality. You know anybody like that? Shake your head north or south. Some of you are sitting in that chair. And, and it's just, all oh, this. I see some of you pointing at somebody sitting next to you. Uh, I'll just do it myself, uh, which often happens when one is too busy to take the time to include others or too busy to show somebody else what they need to do. Listen, if you're too busy, often because you're involved in things you don't have to be involved in or maybe shouldn't be involved in, if you're too busy, you're misusing your gift. If you're too busy, you're misusing your gift because God's given you the same amount of time that he's given everybody else. And it's important for you to understand that God doesn't say, oh, man, I need to give you more time. Okay, you get 28 hours in a day. You, you're slacking off. You can have 18 hours a day. You know, it's, it's not that. We all have the same amount of time, and God knows how we fit into that time schedule. And so God's not asking you to do something that, that, that you don't have time for. He's not asking you to do something you don't have time for. The seventh misuse is interfering with God's discipline by premature help. In other words, this happens when you don't stop and take time to be instructed by God on what to do. And you just see something and you just go, okay, I, they're suffering. And that means I got to go do something. Let me ask you something. What if they're suffering because God is disciplining them? If you jumped in when God is trying to discipline them and you jumped in to try to help them out, you're interfering with God's discipline. And that would be sin. So a misuse is to interfere with God's discipline without really being led by God to do that, to do something. You're just jumping in with premature help and God's not ready for you to do something yet. So that's a misuse. The eighth misuse is becoming hurt by the ungratefulness of those who were helped. In other words, if somebody's ungrateful, uh, you get so focused, oh, they didn't even thank me. Listen, if, if you had a nickel for every time you weren't thanked, you'd be rich. People just don't do it, and especially in this day and age. People don't thank people. They just don't. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, and when they do thank, it's like, oh, well, you're welcome. <laughs> you know, that's, it's, it's, we just, we're not a very thankful generation anymore. And so people who have the gift of serving, they misuse this. Oh, so they didn't thank me. Look, we all like to be thanked. And it happens that sometimes people don't thank us. And if we focus on the fact that they don't thank us in fact, in, and focus on that God did something that he wanted to do in their life, then we've misjudged what God's doing. We're focused on what we did as opposed to being focused on what God did. We're focused when we're focused. I mean, my voice is changing. <laughs> Next are the zits. I know that's what's going to happen. Um, so we, we tend to focus on the problem and the fact that the problem was solved and they didn't thank us. Instead of focusing on, look what God did. God did something here in their life. And listen, the Holy Spirit knows how to work in their life, to continue working on their life, to make them grateful. Thankfulness is a characteristic that God wants people to have. So let Holy Spirit be the one that works on them. Don't worry if you don't get thanked for it. And finally, number nine, uh, getting sidetracked while working on an assignment. I love this. It, Paul says to Timothy, Timothy, guard what's been entrusted to your care. Turn away from godless chatter and the opposing ideas of what's falsely called knowledge, which some have professed and in doing so have wandered from the faith. We don't have time to get into this, but I want to break this verse down. And so we'll do that next Sunday. We'll finish up looking at the gift of, of or the, 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 the spiritual gift of serving. And then after we get into serving, then we get into teaching. Oh boy. I love what some of you said. And I heard this more than once. Some of you said, boy, I was listening to you talking about prophecy. And I'm thinking, oh, boy, that's hitting home. Was it? Can I can I tell on you, Linda? Where are you? Linda said uh, that kind of scared me. Because I heard some things that I uh, just didn't expect. Listen, you'll see that as we study these gifts, you'll see things that are you that you didn't know that you were going to see and that it's related to a spiritual gift. And some of you are going to see this in serving and you're thinking, I never thought of myself as a servant. I don't even like people, you know. Um, and then we're going to get into teaching and some of you are going to say teaching that that could be me. Oh, come on. I hate teaching spiritual gifts for this one reason. Usually after teaching spiritual gifts and finishing this, the whole series on spiritual gifts, people leave my class. Because God's called them to go somewhere else to minister. 
I hate that, but I love it. I love it. So I wish some of you would leave after this. Because that would confirm that it you know, make me feel better, you know? No, just kidding. But it does happen. Some people just say, oh, I finally realized God's called me to, to do this, and I need to go do this somewhere else. All right, so there we go. Uh, real quickly, I, I don't want to end a lesson without at least giving you a chance to ask a question real quick, and, and I promise you we won't delay this. Anybody have a real quick question? Raise your hand if you do. I see no hands up in the air. The good. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. Holy Father, thank you for this wonderful truth that you are at work in lives. And not only are you working our life, but you're working other people's lives through us. And Lord, for those who have that gift of serving, I pray that you would light a fire in their life to, to sense this motivation, to, to be used by you to meet people's needs in a very practical way that will change their life for eternity. God, we're dealing with eternal issues here. I realize that, so I don't want to misteach this, but oh God, bury it in our hearts so that we'll be so, so impassioned to be what you called us to be, to accomplish what you want us to accomplish, to serve you in a way that will bring honor and glory to your name. I pray this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Go away.